today we're going to talk about the development of motor milestones in children birth to 24 months. This is a public service video for parents. We're going to go through the milestones to look for. We're going to look at what's going on behind the scenes in terms of the brain and the body that's allowing those milestones to occur. We're going to go through what a pediatrician may check for in the office. We'll also tie it up with some tips for you about things to bring to your pediatrician's attention. Babies are born ready to move. They come out and they're kicking and batting their arms. But somewhere between birth and 24 months, those random movements are going to turn into highly controlled and coordinated movements. How does that happen? Let's see. From the parent's point of view, we're going to look at head control, the milestone of birth to four months. You bring your newborn baby home from the hospital and they can't control their head at all. You're aware you need to keep your hand behind their neck to help them with that endeavor. We can also look at how they develop head control by looking at how they do on their belly. A newborn can barely move their head side to side to clear the floor. By one month, they can get their head up 45 degrees. By two to three months, they get their head up 90 degrees. And by four months, they've not only got their head up, they got their chest up and they've assumed that classic puppy pose. What's going on behind the scenes? The newborn baby's movements are governed by these primitive reflexes. Principle number one is that primitive reflexes must resolve prior to attaining voluntary control over motor movements. What's going to go on at the doctor's visit? The doctor will look at those primitive reflexes and make sure that they are resolving as they should over those first few months. So for example, the Moro or startle reflex, the asymmetric tonic neck reflex, also called the fencing reflex, hand grasp, foot grasp, where the baby's hand or toes curl around an object. The doctor will also check the attainment of head control by something called the pull to sit maneuver. Baby is four to seven months of age and now working on rolling over. When he was on his belly, he managed to get his head and his chest up. Now all it takes is a little bit of momentum and gravity and he's gonna go all the way over. How does baby learn to roll over? Baby needs time on his tummy, on a firm surface. Principle number two, development is influenced by experience. From six to nine months of age, baby is working on sitting. At six months, baby may sit briefly with a rounded back leaning on his hands when he's placed by the parent and then fall over. By seven months, the baby can straighten his back somewhat and is relying less on his hands. Often by eight months, those hands are available for play. The baby is now stable enough to maintain himself without that support. And at nine months, the baby may be able to get himself into a sitting position from lying down. Behind the scenes, we're guided by principle number three. Control is developed from the neck downward. The doctor will look at your baby's progress towards sitting. Does he need to keep his legs wide apart to stabilize himself? He may push the baby over and look for the baby to put out an arm on either side to break his fall, a protective reflex called the lateral parachute. And what about standing? From six months, babies enjoy being held and supported standing. It's a whole new view of the world. Between nine and 12 months, babies often will begin to pull themselves into a standing position. After that, they begin to take steps holding on, what we call cruising. And soon after that, they will let go and begin to take steps with their parents' hand support. There's another principle at work here, principle number four. Postural protective reflexes precede the attainment of motor milestones. Baby's not gonna be stable enough to walk until there's a backward parachute, until when pushed backward, the baby has developed this protective reflex to put his arms behind him and break his fall and protect his head. And what about crawling? Crawling is not generally considered a motor milestone because about 15% of typical children do not crawl. They go directly from sitting to walking. But the majority of children do crawl and there are a variety of crawling styles. The typical scenario is that baby starts off in sitting and in reaching for a toy, ends up on all fours, begins to rock, and may initially move backward before figuring out how to go forward. Most children begin to walk between 12 and 17 months. We all know the walk of a new walker. The legs are wide apart, the arms are up to help with their balance, and often they're not bending too much at the knees. Over the next few months, we'll see certain changes. 
The legs will come closer together, the arms will come down, and will be more bending the knees. Babies this age like to climb, they like to stoop and recover, they like to squat when they play. Baby is 18 to 24 months, a phase I like to call playground ready. Walking has turned to fast walking, has turned to running. Baby can now climb upstairs erect, holding onto the railing or a parent's hand. Between 18 and 20 months, the toddler will kick a ball. At 21 months, he'll throw a ball. At 24 months, he'll jump both feet off the floor. And by 24 months, they're alternating their arms when they move and they've adopted more of a heel-to-toe mature gait pattern. The majority of the major motor milestones have been acquired by 24 months. Now it's just a matter of refining. It's important to remember that children progress through these milestones at their own pace and in their own way. And not to get too focused on any one particular age of attaining a milestone. We do have some guidelines, though, of things to bring to your pediatrician by four months, if your baby has not attained head control, that would be something to discuss. By nine months, if baby is not yet sitting. By 18 months, if baby is not yet walking independently. If at any point, baby has a regression or loss of previously attained skills. If you have any concern about your baby's development, do bring these concerns to your pediatrician. He or she will determine if your child needs more medical evaluation, or would benefit from involvement with early intervention, or if the skills are being attained within the normal range of development.